Ball fake got her into the lane, and Alexis Ebers. Now it's 7-0 Carroll early on. Ebers, by the way, the lineage and the bloodlines are strong. Many Villanova fans will remember Eric Ebers, class of 1996. Well, her mother, Michelle Thornton, also played at Villanova at that same time frame. It's where they met, they got married, and Alexis is the next in a long line of talented players from that family. Good hands. Felicity McPhillan up ahead. Contact and she'll shoot two. A great take by McPhillan there. Army. Nice steal. And a good take by McPhillan, a uh, senior going to Air Force. So two at the line. A dream start for Rini Shields and this club. Shields' background, she was a grad assistant first two years out of college for Villanova and then was an assistant at St. Joe's University for seven years. Took some time away and she's been at Archbishop Carroll since 2008 as an assistant and since 2016 as the head coach. Rini Shields' background is so interesting because she still does the color commentary for the St. Joe's University girls basketball games. It'll send it the other way on a moving screen. And so Shields right at home here at the University City campus of St. Joseph's. There's an open three for Nardi, couldn't hit. Megan Rulo pulls it down, and Cardinal O'Hara wants to run. Molly Rulo, great kick out. A lot of contact without a call. Here's Joni Quinn, been quiet thus far, open three. And rattled out, and it'll stay here. The undercut on the offensive rebound attempt, good job by Molly Rulo inside. Brooke Wilson picks up the personal. The Army commit, she'll play with her sister Taylor Wilson next year there. A college range three won't go. Cardinal O'Hara looking to get on the board. First, they got to get a stop. Great catch by McPhillan, but Joni Quinn pulls it away. One on one, she'll go right at Felicity McPhillan. And it's going to go the other way. So the 2021 and 2022 state champs, Megan, struggling to get on the scoreboard. They're a team that lost in the state semifinal last year. Class of the Philadelphia Catholic League year in and year out. But Archbishop Carroll putting the screws on early on. They are. They have to transition some of these uh, defensive possessions into buckets. And once they get that first, it'll, I'm sure it'll open up the floodgates. McPhillan guarded by Joni Quinn. This is a great matchup to watch here tonight. Deep three. That's a great box out there, specifically by Quinn allowing Coleman to get the rebound. Archbishop Carroll stays man-to-man -man defensively. Molly Rulo dribbled into a double team, fortunate to get it back. Now well, fortunate's one thing. How about the effort from Megan Rulo? Now Quinn inside. Sneaks it up over the arm of Maddie McPhillan. Joni Quinn is a gym rat, often seen on campus at 6 a.m. for preschool workouts. A lot of times doing it on her own. She's become a fantastic player. And heading to a uh, familiar LaSalle University, uh, coached by a, a former Carroll coach, um, Mountain McGilvery. So that will be a fun Catholic League. Uh, a reunion of a reunion. sorts. Alexis Evers 
An inside out threat. We knew about her coming in. She can get those feet set and let it fly. Two ten to play. Great ball movement by O'Hara. Let's we'll see if, oh, and a seal from Ebers. Ebers doing a nice job jumping in that passing lane. Wilson needles into the lane, draws the double team. Extra pass for Nardi, and that's a thing of beauty offensively. It all started from the pink touch off the dribble drive from Wilson. Fifteen to two. And Cardinal O'Hara gets into the lane, really good offensive set, just couldn't put it in. That's Greta Miller. Quinn is bumped. Just the second team foul against Archbishop Carroll. One more look at that last one. The paint touch, the double team, swing it around. Beautiful. An important final minute 13, I think, here, Megan. Not to rush, certainly, but to run your set. Great look inside and a chance to get Molly Rulo very proficient from the line to the stripe. Yeah, first team, all Catholic, 1,000 points score as a junior and a uh, signed plan to go to Drexel. So really strong player here. The lid just won't come off, though, for the Lions. One of two for Molly Rulo. Unanimous first team all Catholic, as you mentioned. And we were told by Chrissy Dugan that she has an unmatched motor. Great off the ball, a three level threat. And early on, they trail by 12. But you see and you know, Megan, from playing at the high school level, and my partner here, also a distinguished letter woman from the University of Pennsylvania, you know that basketball is a game of runs. Sure is, and uh, Carol has come out and started strong. Uh, it's, they learned from their last game, and they um, have t have given the final uh, final push to start this quarter. And we'll see what we can um, what they wrap up with with a minute to go. And it really is intriguing this Archbishop Carroll team. I think it often comes back to coaching when you can't connect all that many dots from the prior year. Certainly, Brooke Wilson was a junior on last year's team and, and had a lot of key minutes and key contributions, but think about what they lost. Taylor Wilson, who's also at West Point where Brooke Wilson will go. Megan Sheridan is playing lacrosse at the University of Pittsburgh. Courtney Schumacher is playing field hockey at Fairfax, and so they lost experience, great defenders. Of course, Taylor Wilson's inside presence, and they have to run different offense this year. And a lot of it has to do with that. The dribble penetration by Brooke Wilson. And I see the O'Hara coaches looking for a five second call there. Really great defense by, uh, by Carly there. Open three in the corner. That one won't go. And Archbishop Carroll can hold for one. Great hands, loose ball on the floor, and a tie up, and the alternate possession. This is gonna hurt Cardinal O'Hara with just 1.9 seconds to play. And now to start the second quarter, Archbishop Carroll's gonna get it. The Lions won't get a full possession out of this. See what they can do to get the shot off. Not nearly enough. So what's been eight minutes of all Archbishop Carroll, Megan, 
ends that way. Or you have a great defensive play, loose ball on the floor, O'Hara the first one to dive on it. And what's the reward? You hand the possession hour right back to Archbishop Carroll to start the second quarter. Definitely a tough, uh, tough quarter for O'Hara, but no doubt, you know, coming in second in the con second in the Catholic League, a strong win against West Catholic in the in the game prior. Um, they will be back to fight, I know, in the second quarter. No doubt about that. And you take a look at this Cardinal O'Hara team and everything that that they've been able to do, producing some tremendous players. And I know we're going to miss some on this list, but Natasha Clout jumps out to me. Currently playing in the NBA, played at St. Joseph's University, actually just got traded to the Phoenix Mercury, so she'll have a new role with her new team. And uh, Kristen Clement won a national title at Tennessee, of course, at, under Pat Summit at the time, the late, late Pat Summit, and the all-time scoring leader at Cardinal O'Hara. You know, when we talk to Chrissy Dugan, and what's the link or the, the connection between all of these talented players that come in year after year. She said, listen, kids that come to O'Hara are ones that want to play at the next level. They know they'll be playing in the best league in the state, and they feel like this is a program that will allow them to get to that level because of the girls, Megan, that came before them. Oh, for sure, and even uh, back in the day when I was playing, it was always an O'Hara, Carroll, um, where the Catholic League you know, matchups that we always wanted to play against as, an, as a former Interact player. So um, to this day and in the past, you know, Little T was a, Natasha Cloud was a <laughs> prior teammate of mine. So it's great to see her continuing to have such success um, at the WNBA and professional level. And of course, my partner here, Megan McCullough, a star at the Academy of Notre Dame, right down the street from both of these schools. Getting started here in the second quarter. Good effort inside here, and defensively, Cardinal O'Hara able to shut off the dribble drive. Nearly lost the basketball. Cardinal O'Hara ratcheting up those defensive screws, and a travel is called. Could argue that perhaps she actually lost possession on her way down to the floor and then regained it, but the official said, nope, that was possession and taking it to the floor. That's exactly what O'Hara needed to coming out of the gate, see if they can turn something into an offensive score here. The back screen for Joni Quinn, and a blocking foul is called. So that is the second personal foul, something to keep your eye on. Second personal against the Philadelphia Catholic League MVP, Brooke Wilson. She remains out there on the floor. Patience here from the Lions as Archbishop Carroll stays in that switching matchup zone here. The great slide to the hoop, but better defense. First with the hands in there was Maddie McPhillan. As many know, we have some uh, sibling both on the court as we speak with uh, the McPhillan and the uh, and yeah. the Rulo sisters. So some fun leadership that the older girls are providing their their little sisters. That's right. Contact and it will send Archbishop Carroll to the line for two. One more look. Nice strong baseline take. We'll have two from the line. Abby McPhillan wearing number 15 here tonight, a freshman. So not just two siblings on the floor, but three, if you can believe that. A senior Felicity, although not on the floor at the moment. But there are times where you'll see Felicity, Maddie, and Abby on the floor concurrently. And, Fel and Abby had the uh, game winner in our last one, so helped us uh, get Carol to here to this day. That's right, defeated a very talented Lansdale Catholic team. And 
Boy, that was an interesting final week of the season. We'll get into that over the course of the contest where you have three state caliber teams and only two spots for them. Joni Quinn got her own rebound. But Archbishop Carroll is so quick on the closeout defensively. And a travel. I think that's a really good use of discretion by that official there. You keep the stars in the game unless there's something egregious. You don't want Molly Rulo picking up a cheap one. If you can argue that the feet moved quickly, call the travel and move on. Agreed. Both great offense and defense there. No need for a foul, and it was a, a good call. Because if it wasn't a travel, I think it was a charge. Five second count is on. Great hands. And there is Rulo coming up with it. A few minutes in and we're still 18-3, which is the start of the quarter. Bridget Ann Donahue got a touch. She just came into the contest. This is Megan Rulo. And she is blocked, not even off her hands. Maddie McFillin leads the break. Beautiful give and go, basketball, and I don't know how that doesn't fall. It's a tough one in and out, but great give and go from uh, the Carroll team there. Coleman, strong to the hoop, draws the personal against Maddie McFillin. We'll get one more look, and that's just putting your head down, one crossover. And actually the foul will instead go against Alexis Ebers, the sophomore. Carly Coleman, very talented player who will end up playing at the Division III level. A second team all Catholic, and we were told that she is just a winner in everything that she does. That could be foul shooting contest after practice. That could be pickup where she's playing with the twos. She yeah. ends up winning everything she does. Wide open down low is Ebers. And Megan, all night long, Archbishop Carroll has had the answer. They have. O'Hara tried to pressure there, and they found the open player down, down the floor. Good ball movement here from O'Hara. Oh, feed inside. Wow. Rulo could not hit it. But again, even when you get a look at the rim there, Megan, Archbishop Carroll is collapsing the double team any time that Molly Rulo is in the post. And they're willing to commit a double team there and let someone else beat them from the outside. They are. It sounds like they had a game plan, and they, they seem to be taking to it, getting stops on defense and transitioning and scores on offense. Yeah, you're right. It leads to it, doesn't it? Brooke Wilson, another two. Coleman dribbles into a double team. That's a tough finish in traffic. As you were speaking of Coleman, also a first team Aldelco uh, soccer player. So as you were saying competitive, I can definitely see that on the court and on the field. Archbishop Carroll in the black, Cardinal O'Hara in the white here today. Five second count is going. She gets to the rim and is, she ends up traveling with the basketball. Now it's Cardinal O'Hara, Megan, coming in and starting to commit those doubles at the point of attack, make life difficult for the Patriots. They are, they, they need to get some stops on, on defense and transition that into uh, get something here on offense. Great hands there by McFillin. That's on Maddie, the junior. And Joni Quinn will run the offense from the logo. Coleman. Got to be someone open. There sure is. An open three won't go from Greta Miller. But the offensive rebound by Rulo. Coleman steps into one. 
And sometimes they just don't go in, but that's a great offensive possession for Cardinal O'Hara. Found the open player, swung the ball, and got an open shot. Full court pressure from Cardinal O'Hara. And turned over. Coleman, good cut. And the finish. Cardinal O'Hara now starting to get in business. That's Donahue. They nearly got another steal. And a timeout is called by Rini Shields, a heady veteran move there by their head coach. We get another look at Donahue's finish in traffic. Nice finish from freshman Donahue. And I think there's a lot of respect in this building and around the Philadelphia Catholic League for both of these coaches. We have a look right now inside the huddle of Cardinal O'Hara and Chrissy Dugan, her background very interesting. Class of 1993 here from Cardinal O'Hara. She won three Philadelphia Catholic League titles as a player. And that's something she told us is very important. She, she wants to do that once, or at least once, hopefully more than once in her case, but every four-year cycle. She wants all of her players to come through the program to experience getting up on the ladder, cutting down the nets. She played at and then coached at LaSalle University until such time that she was due with her third child. And so got out of coaching for, for four to five years. And then Chris Genther, who I know you know, he called and asked if she wanted to help at Cardinal O'Hara. She worked there for five years and all of a sudden there was an opening and uh, it happened to be when Maggie Dugan, her daughter was a freshman. And she's now in her sixth year with the program. So I know you've been in circles around Chrissy Dugan in this program. A lot of respect for what she's been able to do over many years. Oh, for sure. And, you know, it comes full circle. Um, it's great to have her see her back, hopefully leading this team to the plushtra. That's certainly the goal, the Catholic League championship game. A great. But it has been McPhillan again. Yep, and a great time out there. Rooney saw some, you know, some shaky uh, offense and it's called a set and ex the team executed. Back to a 16-point cushion. Donahue, who's had to play more minutes in the latter stages of this first half. I love the matchup of Molly Rulo against Brooke Wilson. That is worth the price of admission. They get the switch, though, and Abby McPhillan now has Rulo open three in the corner, won't go for Donahue, didn't draw any iron. And I know a minute 30 is a long time. I think Archbishop Carroll will run their set, but up 16, the Catholic League MVP with the ball on her hands. Well, she went into traffic, perhaps bailed out as she tried to slide to the hoop. Yeah, as you said, Brooke Wilson here taking it. A Joni Quinn steps in for a questionable, you know, if she was in position or not, but really great take and uh, off defensive possession as well. Brooke Wilson will shoot two at the line. These coaches, particularly the savvy veteran ones like Rini Shields, they never quite give you too much. I mean, very generous with her time, but she said, ah, you know, this year, it's been about finding ourselves. We're still not there. We need to learn a lot more about ourselves and each other. Brooke Wilson has had to step into a leadership role this year, and that's something that she is continuing to develop into. And the offense is completely different. Listen, all those things may be true, but three seed in the Philadelphia Catholic League, two regular season losses, and now a 17-point lead. They're not there yet, but they're doing a nice job finding themselves, particularly on the defensive end. And now they might hold for one. Cardinal O'Hara may try to coerce them into taking a shot with the on-ball pressure. Maddie McPhillan. And Felicity, and yes, this is one of those times where all three McPhillans are on the floor. And they are McPhillin' it up tonight. <laughs> they sure are. As well as sisters, we have uh, AAU teammates on the floor as well. I saw uh, at one point Donahue guarding 
Abby McPhillan, their teammates uh, on the off season, their spring AAU for the Comets. So there's multiple of those uh, happening out there between this matchup. Great head fake, kept the toes on the ground. Throw that one on the highlight reel for Alexis Evers. Final two seconds, Quinn won't even get the shot off. And Archbishop Carroll, if you can believe it, even more momentum, an all-world head fake. Keep that left foot down, get them organized, and knock it down. Wow, what a way to end the half. 28 to eight. And Archbishop Carroll at this point, Megan, avenging that loss in the regular season. We talked about it at the jump. The only thing that that loss really does at this point this means that Archbishop Carroll is wearing the road black uniforms. It gets you to this floor in the Philadelphia Catholic League semifinal, and they've come to play. They sure have. Shots are falling, defensive stops, um, but you know, it's, a, it's one half, there's a second to come, and you know O'Hara's going to come out fighting. And the only place to watch it is on the Sports Fan Base Network. Want to thank our crew here today, Kevin Conley producing the action, camera folks Ian Sawyer, Sawyer and Aliyah Pope. Megan McCullough, my color commentator. I'm Bob Long. We'll take a quick break, and the second half is coming up next here on SFBN. Hi, I'm Tommy Green, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. When I was in high school, it was very important to me to show scouts what I could do. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the sports fan base network. If you're a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY. For over 40 years, Blocks has been transforming what's possible by providing a safe, quality, values, and faith-based education to thousands of students, the leaders of tomorrow. You can fund a need-based scholarship for students simply by paying your PA taxes, and you'll receive a 90% tax credit refund on the donated amount. Changing the future is simple. Start today. Learn more at blocks.org slash tax credit. At Blocks, we're about legacy, heart, and providing the next generation with more than hopes and dreams. Through your investment of tax dollars, you receive a 90% tax credit and we ensure students receive scholarships for a safe, quality, values, and faith-based education. Becoming a Blocks donor is a win-win. Leave a lasting legacy. Create new possibilities. Take your shot and join our team today. Visit blocks.org slash tax credit. Blocks is the largest scholarship organization in PA, offering donors a 90% credit refund on any scholarship donations made to your school through Blocks EITC tax credit program. We all need to pay taxes. Why not let those funds create a better future for those who will one day lead in our place? Make a wise investment with your tax dollars and support students in gaining a safe, quality, values, and faith-based education. For over 40 years, we provided opportunities for students, so we understand the importance of legacy. Visit blocks.org slash tax credit to transform your tax dollars into funding the future through Blocks. A 90% tax credit refund could be available to you or your company by becoming a member of a Block Scholarship LLC. For over 40 years, through the support of donors like you, we've been providing need-based scholarships to students for a safe, quality, values, and faith-based education. Becoming a donor is simple and takes only minutes. Any individual or company who is subject to PA taxes can qualify. Your tax liability will dictate how much you are able to donate to the school of your choice in the form of a scholarship for a qualifying student. And you'll receive a 90% tax credit refund on the donated amount. It's truly a win-win. Simple, effective, life-changing. Visit blocks.org slash tax credit to join the team. Fund the future through Blocks today.
Hi, I'm Marty Bystrom, former pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. In my experience in Major League Baseball, I know how important it is for high school athletes to gain exposure. My friends at Payroll Service Solutions are huge supporters of high school sports and the Sports Fan Base Network. If you are a small to medium-sized business in need of a payroll company, contact Payroll Service Solutions. Not only will they take care of you, they will continue to support the community. For more information, contact Payroll Service Solutions at 215-624-0922 or 866-PAYEASY.
Second half about to get underway here from the Philadelphia Catholic League girls basketball semifinals from St. Joseph's University, University City Campus, and the entire Philadelphia Catholic League semifinal and final bonanza here over the next week is brought to you by Blocks, proud partner of the Philadelphia Catholic League. Bob Long and Megan McCullough alongside. Megan, first half was all Archbishop Carroll. Kind of punched Cardinal O'Hara in the mouth, and they've had 10 minutes now to think about it. Any key adjustments or anything that Archbishop Carroll has done well that Cardinal O'Hara needs to, to change, avoid, exploit here in the second half? Yeah, I think we've talked about it, but O'Hara has the ball here. They need to get some offensive flow going. I think once a few baskets go in, it's going to open up you know, um, their confidence, their their free freeness to play um, and just continue to get stops and turn those into offense possessions. Yep, and Archbishop Carroll, what I think they've done best, one is control the glass, but two, they've coerced a lot of turnovers from Arch, uh, from Cardinal O'Hara, and the reason they've been able to do that, they're so, uh, they're so imperative that they get the basketball inside to Molly Rulo. She sets up in the post. But Archbishop Carroll has been committing double teams there, and the passes have not been crisp enough, and perhaps trying to get the pass in where that isn't the right pass. Some inside-out action where Rulo can catch and turn and find somebody open on the perimeter when the double team comes. And then you do have to knock those shots down, but might be the blueprint, I'm sure, part of what was talked about in the locker room. Certainly has to be her as well, Joni Quinn. Carly Coleman gets a touch, and Archbishop Carroll stays man-to-man -man defensively. Quinn spins. Good luck to the opposite block. There's that kick out. The three wouldn't go, but that's the idea when the double comes. Kick it to the open man. That was great ball movement. And the Euro step turns into a travel. We'll go the other way. We were talking at half about the staff for Archbishop Carroll. You knew a, a whole bunch of them, but Aaron Shields, of course, related to, to Rini, who's running the ones and twos for this team. And then how about Mike Peretta, son of Harry Peretta, longtime head coach at Villanova, and of course, a former standout himself at Bonner Prendergast that nearly took Bonner Prendergast to a Catholic League title just a few years ago. Awarded by Lynn Greer and Roman Catholic in the final second. That was a classic from the Palestra. But he's yeah. also on that staff. Yes, a lot of a lot of basketball in the blood of those families. Um, Carrie Shields and Aaron Shields, both players during my time back in the day. So it's fun to see them on the sidelines helping these girls out. Good hands by Megan Rulo. Rips through that double team. And now that lane starts to open up and it just won't fall. Brooke Wilson pulled it down. And they give it away. Cardinal O'Hara finally gets the bucket. Three really good offensive possessions in a row. When shots aren't going in from afar, getting to their hoop. Uh, getting to the baskets, get some of those easy buckets is, gonna, is what's going to help. And there comes the double team again. Here come the Lions. Carly Coleman. Timeout, 637, some life in the building. Yep, we knew O'Hara was going to come back fighting, and they sure have played the first minute and a half. Aggressive, getting steals and attacking the basket. 637 to play. This is just getting started here in the second half. And Cardinal O'Hara talked about some of their tremendous alumni. Of course, Natasha Cloud, Kristen Clement, Amaris Baker playing at Drexel, Maggie Dugan starting at Richmond, Sydney Scott starting at Marshall. And Joni Quinn, see her on the screen there, Molly Rulo. Two more in that lineage. And they want to cut down the nets. It'll be a long climb the rest of the way. But a great start to this third quarter, a 6-0 run. Yeah. 
Megan Rulo that time with the pressure in the backcourt. Some great fan base here from O'Hara cheering on their the girls team and you know 14 points seems a bit easier coming out the gate than that uh, the, the deficit that they had earlier. Carroll able to break the pressure, but the double teams still come. Brooke Wilson get it into the hands of the most valuable player. The chant of defense reigns in. And this, this is where, go ahead, yeah. This is a big possession here for Carroll uh, to get a score here to stop this run of O'Hara, as we talked about, a game of runs and see if they can turn something into offense. McPhillan runs off that ball screen. A little curl cut there. 30 to 14. And not even just to get that bucket, Megan, but to run 45 seconds off the clock, to run a half court set, do it effectively and get the look you want. Tempers that momentum. For sure, patience on offense and Carroll is showing that tonight. Molly Rulo takes the ball screen, has the matchup against McPhillan, the head fake, and they just could not, she couldn't finish there. And now numbers, two on one. Smart decision to pull it out and, and work the ball around to get the shot they want. Great drive into the lane. Alexis Evers has had a huge night. Coleman. She went away from the double team and I think when Cardinal O'Hara, if they end up looking back at this one, they're gonna get the turnover. But so many close range layups have not gone for them tonight. For sure, they're getting, getting to the basket and just can't convert. A lot of in and outs and great defense there by Coleman to get the turnover and possession back. Joni Quinn, really good off ball action to get her open. A down screen to allow her to get open beyond the arc. That's a beautiful draw up in the half court by Chrissy Dugan. It's a 15 point lead. Recent baskets have come off Archbishop Carroll turnovers against the full court pressure. Brooke Wilson. And Nardi lost the basketball. Who's the foul going to go against? It goes against Cardinal O'Hara. Hey, that one could have gone the other way. Looks like maybe that ball was loose, and then Megan Rulo was kind of pulled down because she had the best chance to get to the loose ball. Certainly a better uh, view down there from this officiating crew. We do have a great crew here tonight. Has to be, by the way. You don't get this assignment if not. A Catholic League semifinal is a great assignment. Joni Quinn. Quinn traveled with it. Speaking of matchups, Quinn and Wilson just going head to head, offense and defense, are also teammates in the offseason. So they're very familiar with each other, and it's, it's fun to see the competitive spirit. Oh, we got an offensive foul there. Yep, good call there. Abby McPhillan cannot believe it. Quinn, by the way, will play her basketball at LaSalle. Her mom played at Boston College. Her dad was a baseball player at the University of Pennsylvania, UPenn. Your alma mater, Megan? Very nice. They're having a good baseball team this, these days. <laughs> so That's great right. to hear. Another notable baseball alum, Doug Glanville. Quinn couldn't hit it, but another offensive rebound for Greta Miller. Standing at just five foot six, but she gets into it on the offensive glass. And that one will fall for Molly Rulo. This is as close as they've been since early in the second quarter. 13 point lead for Archbishop Carroll.
It's a nice one to get from, uh, from Rulo there. It may help. Nearly got another steal. Abby McFillin slices down the lane. And now we're running up and down the floor. Megan Rulo attacks. She is hammered. And we'll shoot two. Good take there by the sophomore. Let's see if she can knock it down and cut the lead under 10. Great eyes up the floor. Sisterly connection there, no doubt. Between Molly and now Megan shooting two from the stripe. For Archbishop Carroll, Olivia Nardi will take a seat and in her place comes Maddie McFillin. One of two. Great hands, Megan Rulo. Joni Quinn for three, it's a big one. And it's off the glass. Timeout. Cardinal O'Hara right back in this one. And another look. Coleman again, the double team comes inside. Kick it out to the open man. Confidence is getting higher for O'Hara. They're getting steals in the backcourt and that's turning into some, some baskets on the offensive side. Joni Quinn was injured or out for a decent portion of the year and she's come back and you know of course is a threat from the outside great ball handler good passer the person that came in while Joni was out is Bridget Ann Donahue we talked a little bit about her the freshman she played the pure point guard position while Joni was out she's a, a three-point percentage leader on this team she actually won the CYO State Championship in both seventh and eighth grade with St. Anastasia. And believe it or not, both of her parents played at Drexel. And I, I bring that up, Megan, because you, know, you get to the later stages of these games and the more ball handlers and the more experience you have on the floor, the better. You look at Bridget Ann, a freshman, you may not know that backstory about, hey, the keys to the car were handed to her and now you have two point guards out there on the floor when you're trying to coerce steals, when you're trying to move the basketball, I think those two guards are gonna be a key down the stretch here for Cardinal O'Hara. They sure are, they have great length, great skill sets. Hand check called against Joni Quinn, second team foul against Cardinal O'Hara here in the third quarter. That's her second. And again, it's Quinn. One-on-one -on -one defending against Brooke Wilson. And another travel. That half-court offense is nowhere near as crisp. They're not as proficient getting into the half-court either. With all that Cardinal O'Hara pressure. Quinn, again open for three. Not that time. That would have cut it all the way to six. It's a great look by O'Hara. A four high set with a flare screen. In rhythm, Ebers, not that time. And that is last touch by Archbishop Carroll. Rini Shields can't believe it, left hand side of your screen. Arguing for a foul call on that offensive rebound attempt. They definitely are letting the girls play, which is great. The aggression, the, comp the competition of this Catholic League game is, is sure happening out there on the floor. Quinn across the logo. And here's some of that flex action motion off the ball that makes Cardinal O'Hara so good in the half court. Double team, Archibald on the floor. And how is that kept in bounds? But Joni Quinn comes up with it. Good move to the basket. And they're gonna give her the act of shooting. So two shots coming from Molly Rulo. 
I love this here. You get the defense spaced out, little ball fake, and then get to the hoop. Because with that five out look, Megan, all of a sudden, there's no double teams waiting for you in the lane. Yeah, great ball movement and attack by Rulo. One twenty-three to play here in the third quarter. It's been a 16 to four run since the break. Now down to seven. Now let's see if Archbishop Carroll can get comfortable again in the half court. It's the freshman, Abby McFillin, doing a lot of dribbling. Ebers. And with 47 seconds left, Archbishop Carroll nearly gave it away. Potentially looking to take that last shot. That's a long time to dribble against this excellent defense. Nearly net there now. There's the double by Joni Quinn, playing with two personal fouls. Archibald. Patriots know what they want to do. Down to eight seconds. Felicity McFillin gave it away for Quinn. It took it all the way down. And in the final second, the three will not go from half court. What a last minute of that quarter. <laughs> no doubt about it. They didn't even get a, a realistic shot off there, Megan. Certainly, Cardinal O'Hara wasn't able to convert on that momentary possession. But if you're Archbishop Carroll, you're a little disappointed in not getting a shot off there at the end. For sure. Definitely uh, had pressure from O'Hara, a few near steals, uh, kept composure, and then could not, tr not, could not get anything on the offensive end. The reigning 2023 state champions, you're looking inside their huddle right now, Archbishop Carroll. But that's a long and distant memory right now, even a 2024 PIAA state run, which does await them. Not even in their psyche right now. They are looking to get to one place and one place only. And that's about nine blocks down the street to the Palestra on the campus of the University of Pennsylvania, the Cathedral of College Basketball that opens its doors twice a year to the high school ranks. The boys' semifinals will be tomorrow. And once we have the finals on these four games, this one here, Archbishop Wood, the number one seed and undefeated Vikings, taking on Nazareth Academy, coming up just following this one. And then, of course, the boys' semis tomorrow. Father Judge and Roman Catholic, and then Newman Garetti and Archbishop Ryan. We'll have our finals set for Monday night at the Palestra. All three nights brought to you by Blocks, an official partner of the Philadelphia Catholic League. One key here for Cardinal O'Hara, Megan, if they want to complete the comeback. Uh, you know, I think they got, they came out strong in the second half. They have to keep that up, get some steals, and get it to that, you know, 5-3, three, three-point game, and then anything happens at that point. Um, but continue, continuing to make it competitive, which they're doing here with a double team by Rulo. Now that's a lot of players in a tough spot, fortunate for the outlet in Ebers. You can see Carroll's a little bit, you know, they're not easy. They're not playing the way they were free and, uh, and easy they, as they were in the first half. It's a great look on the back cut, offensive rebound. They just can't get either over the front rim, both of them short-armed. Joni Quinn, it's been her half here in the second half and last touch by Archbishop Carroll. 
This is where you want to get some easy ones and where Chrissy Dugan is so talented. Baseline out of bounds. Some sort of slip cut to the basket from one of your bigs, whether that's Coleman or Molly Rulo. Both of them out there, number 14 and number 20, respectively. They want Quinn at the elbow. And now it's Coleman one-on-one, -on -one, count it, and one. Well, Chrissy Dugan and that coaching staff delivered. This was a brilliant out-of-bounds half-court set, Megan. High, just as you said, high post, dish it low, turn and face, and the finish there, and all you can ask for is an and one. Hoping for the three-point play. And again, you pull all four, four girls out. You have the bigs up top. You pull Joni Quinn, who's playing inverted there, a guard getting to the high post, and then you slip Coleman in behind. What does that mean? Well, the double teams down low that have been so successful for Bishop Carroll, there's no defenders there. They're all on the perimeter. Breaking some ankles, Archibald finishes. Bridget Archibald, the junior, with a much needed two for Archbishop Carroll. Quinn, they go under the ball screen, and they got away with it. They sure did. A little bit of miscommunication there on defense, an open shot for Quinn. Quinn nearly had it. And Archbishop Carroll will pull this out and get into the half court. A deliberate pace here from the Patriots here in the second half, specifically this fourth quarter trying to slow things down. Yeah, this is the time of the game where Carroll needs to control the ball, limit their turnovers, and get possessions that are turned into baskets. Megan Rulo, the sophomore, checked out and in checks the freshman, Bridget Ann Donahue. And this is what we talked about earlier, those two guards. Donahue took over while Quinn was on the shelf for a portion of the season. Archibald, good kick. Open three won't go. What an offensive carom for McFillin. And now Abby McFillin with it now, double team. All around her, timeout called before the ball was displaced. You can see how there, Bob, two players on Cara at all times. They're chasing and recovering, and that pressure that O'Hara's providing um, to try to get a turnover and a steal. 30-second timeout on the floor. Once again, want to welcome you to the Philadelphia Catholic League semifinal. Presented by Blocks, the girls' semifinal. This one tipped at just a few minutes after 6 o'clock p.m. And it's 7.30 approximately, of course. Archbishop Wood and Mike McDonald, who have been to the Philadelphia Catholic League final at the Palestra in unheard of 15 of the last 17 years. We'll look to make it 16 out of 18 tonight against a Nazareth Academy, te uh, Academy team that I would say is fair to describe them as the underdog here tonight. They upset a really good Newman Garetti team coached by one of our favorites, Andrea Peterson, in South Philadelphia, not easy to do. And this is a Nazareth Academy team that joined the Philadelphia Catholic League just this year. And they have found their footing as the number five seed in the league. Brooke Wilson lost the basketball. Unfortunate that Bridget Archibald was in the right spot at the right time. Maddie McFillin maybe took an extra step there. And a foul is called. Joni Quinn picks up her third personal. Third team foul here in the fourth quarter. A reminder of what we're playing here, the brand new rules at the high school level. Five fouls per quarter. Gone are the days of the single bonus and one and one opportunities, counting up for the entirety of the half. We start fresh at every quarter beginning and at the 15th foul, they'll go to the line for two. I know, I feel like they've taken the fun out of the one and ones, but. Yeah. That's what we have at the college level as well. It's interesting to watch. That's right. They also took away my tagline. 
Games are won and lost at the front end. <laughs> They're not anymore. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and a moving screen sends it the other way. Second team foul against Archbishop Carroll. That's the second personal against Bridget Archibald. Well, these possessions have to start counting. We tick under five minutes to play. Seven point lead, Coleman. Joni Quinn, the lane opens up for her, and they count it. Wow, and Mike Peretta in particular on that Archbishop Carroll bench can't believe it. They give her the continuation. You can be the judge at home. Contact, two more steps than getting into the shot. So that's a tough one, but great take by Quinn, and we'll see if she can top it off at the foul line. My partner, Megan McCullough, the former point guard for the University of Pennsylvania, the scorer that she is, she loves that call. Give me the continuation, <laughs> she says, huh? As a guard, point guard especially, <laughs> I didn't have the length that Joni Quinn did. Uh, it's, it's definitely helpful, so <laughs> great three-point play from her. And it's down to four, if you can believe that. It was a 28-8 lead at the half. A late three in the final seconds gave Archbishop Carroll that 20-point cushion, and now it is a dogfight all the way to the end. And the other thing is that this is not the, or might not be, the last time that these two teams meet. We know that the, the real prize or the ultimate trophy is that at the Palestra, the Philadelphia Catholic League title. But as many of you watching this know, the Catholic League tradition is fantastic. You play for one champion regardless of classification, and then you break up when PIAA time comes around based upon school size and go and play 6A, 5A, 4A, or 3A. Those are the four classifications where the Philadelphia Catholic League has teams. And Archbishop Carroll, Cardinal O'Hara, both 6A teams, the only 6A teams. And a collision course, if they got to this point and did not lose before it, would have them playing in a state semifinal yet again. They did that last year. Archbishop Carroll won that game and went on to win the state title. Another giveaway. A gather and they lost the basketball. Leah Hudak came back from an ankle injury, an extremely talented young lady. Just couldn't quite handle it. And a foul is called, fourth team foul against Cardinal O'Hara. Carly Coleman picks it up. And as you said, one more for O'Hara and that'll bring Carroll to the line for two shots. So have to keep the aggression, but be smart and, and careful on the defensive end at this critical time. On the state championship side, by the way, so Archbishop Carroll won last year. Our Cardinal O'Hara had won the two prior. So Carroll in 23, O'Hara in 2021 and 2022. The 6-8 title goes through the Philadelphia Catholic League. Sure does. And Abby McFillin went through a double team and traveled. You know, in that situation, you have to look ahead, get that ball up the floor, pass, 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 versus the over dribbling. And that's one where if you're Archbishop Carroll, maybe to have someone else in the backcourt there to fill space and be a safety valve for you could have helped. The freshman, Abby McPhillan, was put in a tough spot. This is for a one-point deficit. Didn't draw any iron. Great box out by Archibald. And that's how you space the floor if you're Archbishop Carroll. And a foul is called. Goes against Greta Miller. Two foul shots coming for the Philadelphia Catholic League MVP. She's been a little bit out of sorts here in the second half after a great first half, Brooke Wilson. And everything tightens up just a little bit including the screws on that rim. One of two, five point lead. 
Halfway home here in the fourth quarter. One team will play in the Palestra on Monday night, February 26th. The championships in the city's most hallowed ground. Molly Rulo wants to take the Lions to the title game. Brooke Wilson says, I don't think so. And back and forth we go. Molly Rulo into a double team. That's excellent hands by Bridget Archibald. Good no call. And Abby McPhillan will slow things down. Timeout on the floor for an injured player. And that is the junior Maddie McPhillan. We talked a lot about the McPhillan sisters, Felicity, the senior, Maddie, the junior, both of their first years here at Archbishop Carroll. She's being helped off the floor. And they're here because of Abby, the freshman, who decided she wanted to play Philadelphia Catholic League basketball. And the two sisters were going to join her there. It's a pretty cool story. Great extra pass, and they'll reset. Archbishop Carroll worried more about possession, taking time off that clock, and getting the ball under the hands of the MVP, Brooke Wilson. Yeah, great patience there. Spacing, spreading the ball, and getting the shot that they want. With under three to go. And coming out of, it was a timeout, certainly for the injury, but they had their half court set that they wanted to run. Rini Shields looking to do it again. Molly Rulo drives and scores with 2.27 to play. Molly has really stuffed it up this half. The layups are dropping and the just strong finishes to the basket. And the adjustment made by the Patriots. Still gonna be tough against the double teams, but getting it into the front court, Brooke Wilson moving it quickly. Now you got more space to work with, harder to double team. And they're taking this clock under two minutes to go. And I'm not sure that anybody but Brooke Wilson is going to take a shot in the run of play from now until the end of regulation. As it stands, Ebers will shoot two after the foul. <laughs> Ebers knocked it down. The daughter in a great lineage, a great basketball family, Eric Ebers. Villanova men's basketball fans will remember him from the mid-90s. Her mother, Michelle Thornton, also played at Villanova in the mid-90s. And now she hits two of the biggest free throws of her basketball career. And as a sophomore, getting first team all Catholic is a, it's quite an accomplishment. So she's had a great year and has a great future ahead. And a great tip there by Bridget Archibald. It goes right off the fingertips of Joni Quinn. And Archbishop Carroll, they have withstood quite a run. It got all the way to at least a four point, may have even gotten down to three at one point, Megan. And Archbishop Carroll has stretched the lead to seven with 142 to play and the ball in their hands. Their most important full length out of bounds play that they'll have. And again, where they've done great in the last half a quarter or so, is getting the ball into the hands of Brooke Wilson downhill and getting her into the front court, basically beating the pressure of Cardinal O'Hara before they can double team. Yep, as you as we knew, Bob, going into this game, it was going to be a dogfight till the end, and these two teams have showed up and are are working their way to the palestra. It's not not an easy one for either team. 
For Cardinal O'Hara, you got to think about who you might want to foul, depending upon who breaks the huddle for Archbishop Carroll. I don't think you give the foul immediately here. Down seven. Turnovers are going to have to be part of the story if Cardinal O'Hara is going to come back and win this basketball game. Oh, for sure. I mean, as a as a player coach, I, I always say go for that steal, play some, take some time off, but not too much, um, and get that steal before having to commit the foul. They space the floor well. Four in the backcourt for O'Hara, and they look up the floor. They had an easy layup, but they're content to take some time off the clock. Wilson. And Nardi is fouled with 1.20 to go. Yep, that was the time to foul. Really good control of the ball that Carroll had. Nardi, the junior, a tremendous shooter from the mid-range and from the outside, knocks the first one down. Here comes Joni Quinn. Eight-point deficit, this one's got to fall. It won't go for Megan Rulo. She got her own rebound. Molly Rulo had great position and finishes. Timeout with 105 to play and a six point deficit. We so, talk about this, Megan, in, uh, in late game situations a lot, but the way the high school game is so unique, and again, for anyone that'll listen, I'd love the NFHS to think about a rule change. The clock does not stop in the final two or even one minute after made baskets. So Chrissy Dugan has to be thinking about that in her huddle as much as anything else is, hey, we need at minimum two three point field goals to tie the game. More likely, it'll take three baskets of some kind. And so that clock is gonna continue running unless you have the requisite timeouts. So as you plan your late game situations, as a coach yourself on the AAU circuit, you have to think about those types of things. Oh, for sure. It's all goes into that strategy of uh, foul, no foul, timeout, let the girls play, all those, all those considerations. And, you know, these girls are in great hands of, Amazing coaches at this level, so they're lucky to have them. And on the Archbishop Carroll sideline, that's the same message. Don't foul an offensive player, not to say let them score, but up the floor, Maddie McFillin brought it down and nearly turned it over. It's last touched by Cardinal O'Hara. But again, the, the way to thwart that, I suppose, for Cardinal O'Hara and be able to score with the clock stopped is to get fouled and make free throws. And in that case, the clock is obviously stopped. It'll stay here again. Good pressure on the ball by Cardinal O'Hara. These are great opportunities to get steals. O'Hara has to deny, get a forced turnover on the sideline here. Nearly thrown away. By the way, we have our digital scoreboard showing it as 42-37. The score is 42-36. Car uh, Archbishop Carroll with the lead over Cardinal O'Hara. And there is the foul with 41 seconds left. Miller picks up the third personal. Alexis Ebers to the line, shooting two. I'm so impressed with Ebers in addition to what she's done on the offensive side of the ball today because she is also the one that will be tasked with defending the opposing big, and we've seen that at times with Molly Rulo and Carly Coleman. It's a big front court to go again. She goes one of two there, and her work defensively matches her offensive output here today. Her has to get something quick here, either to the basket or an open three. And it's taken away by Maddie McFillin. She's fouled before she could outrun to Ebers. But the Carroll faithful can start to feel it. 
The bus trip from Radnor to University City might just have been worth it here tonight. Making reservations for nine blocks down the street for Monday night. Just a few weeks ago, end of January, the, the scores were flipped here. O'Hara on top, 45, with Carroll having 37. So it's always, always going to be a competition between these two. You knew that that 20 point lead was not going to stand. That's a deep three. Rulo, no. Kept in bounds and into the arms of Archbishop Carroll. A foul will send the freshman Abby McPhillan to the line with just 13 seconds left. They rise here in University City. All shades of red. And the Patriots faithful appreciate the effort here tonight. Last year it was Lansdale Catholic that won the Philadelphia Catholic League. The shot from NBA range by Big Shot Live, Olivia Bacella. Archbishop Carroll drew the champs in the quarterfinal round. They took down Lansdale Catholic. And with five seconds left, they don't need to inbound the basketball. They took down the champs, did Archbishop Carroll in the quarterfinals. Now they take down Cardinal O'Hara, the two seed. And only one game to win as they head to the Palestra on Monday night for the Philadelphia Catholic League final. A brilliant effort from start to finish. A first half where Archbishop Carroll blitzed this Cardinal O'Hara team. A 20 point deficit was cut down to one possession at one point and the resolve, the ball handling and the shot making of Archbishop Carroll carried the day. And they win by seven. Megan McCullough, my color commentator, a final thought on this one. Just an exciting night again in Philadelphia girls basketball. Um, you know, Carroll had the start from the beginning, came out fighting. They knew they lost the last one to O'Hara and never gave up despite the pressure that O'Hara, uh, you know, and O'Hara gave them. Uh, so just a really strong competition from both sides, but um, great win by Carroll and it's exciting to see them head to the Plester next Monday. The reigning 6A state champions. The Archbishop Carroll Patriots are one game away from that true and ultimate goal to cut down the nets at the Palestra. Thanks for watching and don't go too, too far. Stay here on the Sports Fan Base Network. Make sure to purchase a subscription to watch Archbishop Wood and Nazareth Academy in game two of our doubleheader. Coming up next, thanks to our crew here tonight, Kevin Conley on production, Ian Sawyer and Aaliyah Pope on the camera. For Megan McCullough, I am Bob Long saying so long for now from St. Joseph's University in University City. Game number one goes to the Patriots of Archbishop Carroll.